After two days of clouds and threats of rain, we have an absolutely perfect day at Concord Pacific Place in Vancouver, British Columbia, as we get set for the pivotal... On the grid for the Molson Indy Vancouver is being brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By American Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles, motorcycles, and power equipment. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Welcome back to Concord Pacific Place in Vancouver, British Columbia. The great Pacific Northwest if you're in the States, the Southwest if you're in Canada for the Vancouver Molson Indy Race. Now, we not only have the PPG Cup and its million dollar bonus at stake this weekend, there is also the Jim Truman Rookie of the Year Award. Here are the standings. Patrick Carpentier leads handily over Dario Franchitti and Gualter Salas, but there are three big stories right there, beginning with the man in the lead who is not here this weekend. With more on that story, here's Gary Gerald. Well, Patrick Carpentier ended up breaking his collarbone in a bicycling accident early in the week, and so Roberto Moreno, who two weeks ago had been pressed into service as kind of a tutor or a coach, now finds himself again in a role as a driver. What kind of pressure are you feeling, and what is your expectation for this event today, Roberto? Well, there's a lot of pressure because you just jump in the car and make, make a seat, jump in the car, and then go racing. And um, there's a lot of things new on this car that I'm not used to, and uh, we're getting used to it throughout the weekend. Um, so we're starting from the back a little bit, 20th on the grid, and we, we're planning to make good strategies to move up. The car now on the warm-up was good, so we we'll recover on the setup and that we're looking good and food for a good race. I think that you're the only guy who's now driven a Swift chassis, a Reynard chassis, and a Lola chassis. Are there big differences between the three? Well, you want me to lose my job? I'm not supposed <laughs> to say that. <laughs> well, there are indeed differences between the chassis. Um, well, I, can only, I can only comment uh, briefly. Uh, you have a car that's better aerodynamically. You have another car that's better uh, mechanically. And you have another car that needs a lot of development. So um, it's a great honor for me to have had the chance to do that. And also the two engines manufacturers that I tried. So um, it's, it, I, it, I, like I say, it's just, it's just fantastic for me to have the opportunity to do all that. Just call him Mr. Versatility. Jan? And when Roberto was talking about engines, here's a guy, Walter Salas, that hasn't had any engines all race weekend until this morning. What was the problem? It was an engine bill problem, I understand? Uh, it was a financial problem, an issue that the team had to resolve with Ford. Ford has been very helpful with, with us, and uh, thanks God, this, uh, uh, last night they finalized, and we, we will be through from now to Fontana, and we're going to finish the season. Now, how tough for a guy, you've got your engines, your team was all here ready to go, but you missed all the practice, all the qualifying. You start at the back of the field. Uh, you don't have time to set up your car, and how tough to work through traffic. I think it's going to be very tough. I think I'm going to lose the rest of hair that I have on my head, but it doesn't matter. It's better to be on the back than not be racing. I, I was pretty sure that we are not going to race this weekend, but yesterday afternoon they told me, you've got to go to the driver's briefing because we, we made a deal, we finalized things, and we are going to be running. So it's great. We're going to be here, and they're going to be in Laguna next week. So is your focus staying out of trouble? Uh, obviously, in the Indy Lights race, uh, the series you came from, a lot of carnage here this morning. Uh, is that something when you start at the back, you just try and stay out of trouble and see what happens half distance? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything to lose. There are no cars th that can overtake me. So I'm going to try to do a different strategy than the leaders, try to learn the track as quick as I can and pick up position on the pit stops. I'm going to risk a different strategy. Like when they stop, I stay out. If they don't stop, I come in. I'm going to try something different to pick up positions on the pit because it's, it's very hard to pass here. OK, well, sometimes you start at the back, you have some more opportunities. Danny? Well, I was supposed to have Dario Franchitti with me, but he's going by right now in one of the parade cars. So we missed an interview. Now, he's, he's one of the mo man of the moment. He's hot. He's, he's had some impressive runs, he's been close, he's led races, but he hasn't had the races, to those results, I should say, that he wanted. He's also got a great opportunity here because he's battling with Patrick Carpentier for the Rookie of the Year honors. He hasn't scored some points, but Patrick Carpentier is injured, so Dario's got a great opportunity. Now, he was very upset after the Elkhart race because he thought that he was racing for that battle for the lead. He didn't realize that it was a yellow. He went out, tried to make a couple of passes, and slid off in those damp conditions. He was very upset with that. So was team bo boss Carl Hogan. Bob? 
All right, thank you, Danny. We've got plenty more to talk about, including meeting our featured team of the week. Hiro Matsusta and Max Pappas will be back to meet the Archiero Wells team as the action continues on the grid here in Vancouver. Stay with us. Welcome back, we're in Vancouver, and if you somehow managed to miss the race, make sure you tune in for the highlights. RPM tonight, Sunday nights at 8 p.m., weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, with all the news of the day in motorsports. Check it out, RPM tonight only on ESPN2. Now here in Vancouver, British Columbia, we're getting set to race, and one of the teams we're watching this week are the Archiero Wells operation out of Southern California. The principals, Frank Archiero and Cal Wells, they've been doing this for a long time, and their team is one of the best in the business, including Richard Buck and Frank Kopak. This team, between them, have won some 51 championships in all forms of motorsports, two wheels and four, off the road and on. The drivers, of course, are Hiro Matsushita and Max Pappas. The latter is standing by with Gary Gerald. Bob, this team's success coming into IndyCar racing has certainly given it valid credentials. Max Pappas, we are seeing now, where you struggled to finish races earlier, a consistency developing late in the season. And I know you must be proud of that fact. I think it's four top 15s now for you in the last four events. Absolutely, no, we are improving all the time. And uh, our goal is take the car to the end, uh, get the most knowledge as we can. And uh, so far, you know, it has been pretty good for us. Well, let's meet the other half of the driving combination. Jan's with Hiro Mashusta. Well, Gary, like many drivers, Hiro is taking the opportunity to get some shade here before a race that uh, gets a lot more warm in the cockpit. But for you, uh, let's switch gears from driver to business person for a minute. Swift Engineering, not a lot of people know that you own that company. Will you next year be driving one of those cars? Well, I hope so, but it depends on the, you know, the team owner decisions and I'm waiting for. It's a team owner decision, but you own the company that builds the car. Certainly, you got to pull some weight. Yeah, but I'm driving for just a driver for a you know, team. For so no influence at all? If you say, hey, I want one of these cars there, no, no dice? Well, no. No, I tried. No, I'm, you know, I'm trying, <laughs> but I don't know yet. Okay, guys, he'd love to have one of those cars. Jan, I'm here with Cal Wells. Now, Cal, you've won all these championships. You've dominated in off-road. You're the king. Everybody loves you down there. You've, you've won everything. And now you've stepped off in the deep end. You've gone into IndyCar racing. You've got a Formula Atlantic team. You've got everything going. You've stepped off really big. What's it been like in these uh, opening couple of years? Well, I'm, I'm working hard to learn how to swim. But, you know, we've partnered Toyota for many, many years. And now with a new association with MCI, MCI Racing, powered by Toyota, we've been able to expand our horizons. And subsequently, we've gone ahead and embraced the card opportunity through the Archieros and uh, Toyota Form Atlantic. Well, now you've put together a great team. You've got Mark Johnson. You've got guys that have won in every form of racing, championships, everything. How long do, do you think it's going to take you to get to the top in IndyCar? Well, I believe we need another year. I think in any development program, not only for our team to gel, but also for Toyota to learn what car competition is all about, which is the most competitive single seat formula in the world. It's going to take us a little more hard work, not a lot more hard work, but a little more patience. And I believe by this time next year, we should be bouncing on the balls of our feet. Well, Max had a good practice and a good qualifying. Uh, good luck to you today here in Vancouver. Thanks, Dan. Gary? Richard Buck came over from the Penske team to work with Cal Wells and Frank Archiero and everybody this year, and I know that it's, it's been a steep learning curve for this team, but Cal was just saying, maybe in another year you'll be able to step up. Do you, you feel like this team is on course to be competitive with some of the superpowers in IndyCar racing? Oh, absolutely, Gary. We've got uh, some really good guys here. We've got some young, aggressive guys mixed with some experience, and uh, Max is a great driver. The Toyota people and their program is coming along. We see improvements every weekend. Reliability is there now. Uh, working on the horsepower every day. I, I think we're definitely on the right track. Everybody able to stay focused in the late race uh, part of the season and, and keep uh, you know the whole demeanor up and positive. I think uh, with personnel like Cal and, and Mark Johnson, uh, people who know how to win championships, this is where we uh, we add some strength to to the guys. They look to us for that, and this is really where you need to be strong. When everybody's tired, it's getting towards the end of the season. There's fatigue on the parts and the cars and the people, and uh, it's uh, right now everybody's just going gangbusters, still full steam ahead. Interesting insight from Richard Buck. Jan. Well, Ian Watt is the man who talks to Max Pappas from an engineering standpoint. Now, how frustrating is it for you when you're in a development program with Toyota and your responsibility is to engineer the car? Is it tough to get a read uh, competitively when you're running a little bit behind those with power? 
A little bit, but you still have to, to make up for that. You obviously do your best and you always have to make the best of the situation that you're in. And that's what everybody in the team tries to do. So provided you can say that you've done your best, that's, that's it really. You always have to do your best and work with the circumstances. With a racing car, the circumstances are always changing. So you have to constantly adapt for that. Okay, well so far they did their job because at the moment they're first in class. Thank you. All right, thanks very much, gentlemen. We'll be back to Vancouver in just a moment. Take a look at Concord Pacific Place this year. Next year, it's going to be very different. We'll tell you about that in a moment. The next stop for the PPG Kart World Series will be a couple of hundred miles down the Pacific Coast, beautiful Monterey, California, the home of Laguna Seca Raceway. Last year, Michael Andretti took the championship fight right down to the last race of the year and then spun his hopes away. For Jimmy Vassar, it was a great race. For Alex Zanardi, even better, as he threw the pass of the year on Brian Herter to win the race. Join us for the race from Monterey, Sunday, September 21st on ESPN. Welcome back to Vancouver, where we have business to decide here, because if the PPG Cup is not clinched here in Vancouver, it goes on to Monterey next week at the Toyota Grand Prix of Monterey, featuring the Texaco 300K. Now the track here in Vancouver is on its last legs. There's been encroachment from development over the years. The promoters have worked hard to keep this race alive. Next year they get a new lease on life, a new contract to the year 2001, and a brand new racetrack that will run in the same direction, but using only a couple of parts of the old track. We'll move across the basin known as False Creek, and it could be a very fast track. Top speeds predicted in the area of 195 miles an hour. The kart racing is really coming alive here in Vancouver. Now as we get into the last few races of the year, it's time to take a look at what's coming up ahead. We call it our silly season. Look around the league. Let's begin with Gary Gerald. What do you know, Gary? Well, Bob, I think certainly one of the key dominoes that may be the first to fall has to deal with Barry Green and Team Green. This is a team that Barry says, quite frankly, hasn't met their expectations this year. He has been extremely disappointed. Parker Johnstone has a contract to be back with this team next year, but there's a lot of speculation. Will it be Parker? Will it be somebody else? Will it be a two-car team? Green says he definitely wants to run a two-car team, but he can't make any announcements at this time. There's been a lot of speculation that Robbie Gordon could be the key driver here. In fact, some people say it's a done deal, that he's been fitted to the car and everything else. Barry won't commit to that, but he says, yes, Robbie heads a very short list of drivers, and he's getting a tremendous amount of driver interest. People would love to be with these guys in 1998. When will it happen? Well, he had hoped that they would know as of two weeks ago at Elkhart Lake. Obviously, it hasn't happened yet, but he says the key thing is to get this team back up to a prominent status where they can be competitive and win races. Jan? Well, Gary, this weekend, John Del Pena made an announcement that will make an effect by the end of the season, and that is that Richie Hearn will be driving a Swift chassis in Fontana. Now, he's done the deal with Carl Haas, and he does expect to run a Swift chassis in 1998. But here are the fine elements or the details of the deal. First of all, Carl Haas has provided two mechanics and a third gearbox specialist for Richie Hearn to be able to use in Fontana. They've given him all of the setups, but most importantly, it's all for free, including painting the car in Richie Hearn colors. Danny? Jan, the guy that they talk about the most is Al Unser Jr. We hear his name everywhere. But I gotta reiterate, this is the silly season. These are rumors. These are people talking, and they want to make things happen. We've got Al Unser Jr. leaving Penske. We've got him going to the IRL and starting a team with his dad and funded by Penske. I even heard that he was going to be in a NASCAR. We've got him everywhere. We've had him doing everything on the sun. We've even got him going to cool Team Green. But I think, in reality, Al Unser Jr. staying right where he is right now. They're going to have a great year next year. They've got an exciting package coming out. Now, a guy that talks a lot about the silly season, particularly because when he did the Formula One, is my own Bob Barsha. Bob, what do you know? Uh, it's an international Olympic event, the silly season. Mine is all about the sanctioning body. At the banquet on October 25th in Los Angeles, we expect to hear of a new title sponsor for what is now the PPG Kart World Series. I don't suppose I should tell you what the rumor says that organization is, but I can tell you this, everybody is absolutely, positively certain it's going to happen, and we'll know when banquet time rolls around. We've still got plenty more to do here in Vancouver. We'll have final thoughts, including what we think it's going to take to win here at the Molson Indy Vancouver. Stand by for more On the Grid from Canada. 
On the grid for the Molson Indy Vancouver is being brought to you by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900. And by Restore, manufacturers of innovative automotive products. Welcome back to Vancouver, where the drivers are headed for the cars, and we're just moments away for the command to start engines on what could be a million-dollar day for Alex Anardi if he can clinch the PPG Cup. It's time for our traditional closing here on the grid, talking to our experts about what it takes to win here in Vancouver. We're going to talk to every former winner of this race. Of course, that's fairly easy because there's only two of them. Al Unzer Jr. has won four times, including his most recent win here back in 1995. Michael Andretti has won three times. Let's get right to the action now, beginning with Gary Gerald. And Michael Andretti is the most recent man to win on the streets of Vancouver. And as you mentioned, three times you've been able to do it. So we turn to you in our segment of what it takes to win. What do you think the keys are on this day? Well, I think one is qualifying well. I think that's important to get up in front and uh, because track position is king here and uh, you got to get good clean pit stops and keep your nose clean. And that's that's basically what you need to do. How hard is it to stay patient in a place where the slightest mistake, like so many street circuits, makes you pay a huge price? It's a big problem here because uh, traffic it gets to be very difficult as well. It's because it's so difficult to pass here. So you have to be patient getting through traffic. Well, let's see if there are any different thoughts from the other guy who's won here. Yeah. Well, at the moment, he is having a conference with Roger Penske, and what they both have done is they have had an opportunity. He now is going to come over to talk to us. When Roger and yourself talk to all the crew and you're talking about the job you have to do today, what did you just say? Or what are you going to try and accomplish when you're starting this far back? Well, basically, that you know, we're gonna we're gonna try to be as uh, protective of the car the first couple laps, try not to get anything knocked off, and and you know, try to protect ourselves. And then, basically, you know, we're just gonna keep plugging away. We're gonna try to keep pressure on who's ever in front of us, and uh, and if we can finish this thing, then we'll be you know we'll be up front somewhere. And so, uh, just telling the guys that we're not giving up whatsoever. Now, I know yesterday was one of your most frustrating days. You didn't get a clear lap in qualifying. Uh, how do you regroup and come back today and have the enthusiasm and the drive that you need after such a disappointing day yesterday? Well, it's a new day, Jan, you know. I mean, uh, it's a beautiful day here, and, and uh, you know, we woke up this morning in good spirits, and, you know, the good Lord's on our side, so, uh, you know, it's a fresh day. We'll go get him. Obviously, this guy has won more than anyone else. Danny? Jan, my feelings at this race is Alex Zanardi is going to try to pull away. He wants to get out there, have a nice clean track, but at some stage he's going to get into traffic. We're probably going to have a yellow. That's going to back him up. If somebody can put pressure on him, he's going to back away. He still wants to score points. He doesn't want to make any mistakes. He doesn't want to have, have happened what happened last year where he got tangled up. He wants to have a good clean race. I think from the guys in the back, if they can put the pressure on him, be aggressive, make something happen, they're going to take the victory, and Alex Zanardi is going to score points. Bob, what do you think? Well, I think the action is all going to take place right where we're standing, in pit lane. It is so tough to pass here, as you've already heard, that the action is going to take place in the pit lane, and that is where a driver can gain places. Earlier this year, Greg Moore went from fifth to second in the space of one pit stop. I believe that happened at Detroit. It could happen here. The best pit crew, as well as the best driver, car, and tire combination is going to win the race here today. Up next on ESPN, we'll have race coverage. Up next here on the Deuce, NASCAR Shop Talk. So if you want to talk NASCAR, the boys are standing by. If you're planning to go racing for the PPG Kart World Series and the million dollar bonus that goes with us, stand by on ESPN for full coverage of the race, perhaps the most dramatic race of the season. I'm Bob Varsha for Danny Sullivan, Gary Gerald, and Jan Bikas. Thanks for being with us. We'll be popping up on ESPN in just a moment with coverage of round 15 of the PPG Kart World Series the Molson Indy Vancouver. So for the moment, so long from Concord Pacific Place in Vancouver. The, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Michael Andretti has won 36 PPG Kart World Series races, three of them on the streets of Vancouver. He must win today or the 97 championship will pass him by. Greg Moore is the youngest winner in kart history, taking a pair of victories in June. But the 22-year-old has been up and down since then, and he needs a win today in his home race, or the PPG Cup will not be his. Paul Tracy dominated the championship for two months after three straight wins in the spring, but he has failed to score in the last two races. He, too, must win today to stay alive.
Jill DeFerrin has yet to win a race in 97, yet he lies second in the championship. Still, even DeFerrin can no longer wait to win. The man they're all looking up at does not need to win today in Vancouver, but winning has become his trademark. His name is Alex Zanardi. The cars are on the track, warming tires and engines in anticipation of what could be the pivotal race of the 1997 PPG Card World Series season. Welcome to the Molson Indy Vancouver. Here are the championship standings. After 14 rounds, Alex Zanardi with a 39-point lead over four drivers still in with a mathematical chance of derailing Zanardi's run to the title. The various permutations of what could either clinch the title here today or send it to the next round of the championship next Sunday in Monterey, California are enough to give you a headache. It comes down to this. Those four men behind Alex Zanardi need a win like they need oxygen. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Varsha. Welcome to what should be a great race. There is so much at stake for Alex Zanardi. First and foremost, the PPG Cup and its $1 million bonus. He could clinch it here today. If he wins, it will also tie Al Unser Jr.'s Kart Series record with his fourth consecutive win, a record set here in Vancouver back in 1990. It would also make Alex Zanardi the first Italian-born PPG Kart World Series champion since Mario Andretti in 1984. But a win here is not a done deal. Four times in the seven runnings of this race, the points leader coming in saw his margin decreased rather than increased. And it can happen in the most violent ways. Just ask Alex Zanardi. A year ago, he was on pole for this race, led the early laps. But coming up on P.J. Jones, trying for an outside pass, he was pinched into the wall, launched into the air, and out of the race entirely. It should be a wicked afternoon here in Vancouver. Nobody knows that better than former Kart Series champion Danny Sullivan. Danny, it's a contact sport in Vancouver. Vancouver is a very difficult track. It's very narrow in the places where you want to pass. It's very rough. If you get in just a foot too far in your braking area, you can lose control of the car as it's bouncing over those bumps. It's very tough to pass around here. Those spots are narrow. The traffic is always a problem. And let's not forget that guys all the way back through the field are racing for different reasons. Some for the championship, some just to score some points, some trying to impress the potential team owner for next year, and some trying to, you know, just improve on their position for this year. It's going to be very tough. The guy that's going to win this race is the guy that is smart but very aggressive. Cars are on the track. Let's take a look at our starting grid. On the pole, Alex Zanardi with a shot at the million-dollar PPG Cup alongside the surprising run of Bobby Rahal. Row two, Jimmy Vassar, the defending series champion, and Michael Andretti, the defending race winner. Row three will be Mauricio Gugelman and Brian Herta. On row four, Jill DeFerrin, second in points, and Mark Lundell. Row five will be Greg Moore, the hometown favorite, and Dario Franchitti. Row six will be Scott Pruitt and his teammate, Raul Boisel. On row seven, Andre Rivero and Christian Fittipaldi. Row eight, Michelle Jardine Jr and his Mexican countryman, Adrian Fernandez. On row nine, Paul Tracy and Parker Johnstone. On row 10, Max Pappas and Roberto Moreno subbing for the injured Patrick Carpentier. Row 11, Richie Hearn and Al Unser Jr. On row 12, Christian Danner and Juan Fangio. Row 13 will be P.J. Jones alongside Hiro Matsushita. And on row 14, Dennis Patolo and Walter Salas, the rookie whose first laps of this track this weekend came in this morning's morning warm-up. Let's talk about the racetrack in more detail, Danny. This track is very rough down here in turn two there's some spots that michael andretti says if you hit that bump wrong you're holding on for dear life he's scared to death every time he goes through there rough spots around all the passing zones that you see are very critical very narrow you've got to be aggressive but if you make a mistake down there your day is probably wrong this is the last year we'll be using Concord Pacific Place in this iteration. And here's what it is, 1.7 miles, temporary road course. That means off camber, greasy, and very, very tight. 100 lap schedule. The pole time was 54.025 seconds, about 113 miles an hour. And Alex Zanardi did it with ease. The race record, 95.571 miles an hour, set by Al Unser Jr. in his last victory in the series back in 1995 here in Vancouver. The pit window between laps 28 and 35, the first of what we anticipate will be two stops by each car in the race. Here's a look at the stories we'll be following. Can Alex Zanardi clinch and become the first Italian-born driver since Mario Andretti to win the PPG Cup? The key, staying out of trouble, and that goes for the four men behind him who must finish ahead of Alex today. Riding the bumps, and there are plenty to choose from around this track. Only two previous winners in the seven previous runnings of this race. Michael Andretti, who's starting pretty close in the fourth spot. Al Unser Jr., his worst starting position since the 1987 Indianapolis 500. He's in the 22 hole.
The cars are side by side in the streets of Vancouver, British Columbia, and we are ready to go racing in round 15 of the PPG Kart World Series. Pole sitter Alex Zanardi with a shot at the PPG Cup if he can win, leads the field around. The safety car is off, and we are about to go green. Jim Swintall waves the flag, and away we go. Zanardi, Ray Hall, Vassar, and Michael Andretti, the first four into turn one. Greg Moore making a move alongside Mark Blundell. Heavy braking coming up for turn three, the slowest turn on the racetrack. From high overhead, it looks much like the streets of Long Beach, California. We visited much earlier this year in round four. Field going slowly, but it looks oh, fairly there clean. There was a little bit of an incident back there. It looked like somebody came out of the, the corner, missed their gear. I couldn't tell if it was Paul Tracy or Allen or Jr. It looks like they, That's Dennis they bumped back there. there, dived out. Touched another car, that's Dennis Patolo. He's had a lot of trouble down in that corner all weekend long. I think he's got a special pass in that runoff area. A toll booth down there would have earned a lot of money this weekend. Everybody's been taking to the escape road. Through the shadows of BC Place, down to turn 10. Oh, Paul Tracy, the right front wheel destroyed. I think that happened when he came out of that corner. He had to move out. A car slowed in front of him. He had to move over. I couldn't tell who it was. Let's take another look. Coming out of the chicane. See, he's already damaged the, the wheel down there. That's after the hairpin. I'm sure that's when he moved over on that slower car coming out of this hairpin you see right here. Well, we couldn't see exactly what it was that ripped the right front corner off of Paul Tracy's car, but that will pretty much put pay to his title chances in 1997. Our pictures are coming to us from Molestar Sports and Entertainment. So Paul Tracy is now gone. The third race in a row that Paul Tracy has run one lap or less. And of course, that does not do any uh, help for his championship hopes right there. You go out, unless something happens to Alex and Artie or some of the guys in the front. And what that's so critical about, it, didn't, it can move him way down the field as well. He can move down a couple of more spots. Some other guys can have a good race today and bump him out of a chance for a top three finish in the championship. You ride with Michael Andretti, looking pretty smooth here. Dennis Vitolo has found the tire wall. That's in the first of the two backstretch chicanes. A chicane that was loosened up slightly to make it a little easier to take. No sign of yellow flags. We'll take this opportunity for a break and be back with more. The Molson Indy Vancouver continues in a moment. Alex Zanardi up front, stay with us. Back in Vancouver, we are under a full course caution. Dennis Patolo found the tire wall in the backstretch chicane. coverage of the Molson Indy Vancouver is being brought to you by Molson Breweries, makers of Molson Golden, Beauty, eh? By Firestone, America's Tire since 1900. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome back to Vancouver. We are under a full course caution. There is Dennis Vitolo who has climbed out of his car after nosing it into the tire wall on the backstretch. The pit action is going on. That is P.J. Jones, the 99, 98X means he started his backup car after mechanical problems as the field was forming up on the grid. Now here's what happened to Paul Tracy moments ago. Okay, Paul Tracy's right there. He's moving up now. See the slow car, he misses a gear or something. Paul has to dive out. It looked like it was Andre Ribeiro that he moved out on. And I've got a feeling that he banged that wheel or ran over it damaged the car right there because we saw him go up the escape road was the next corner. The right front wheel was ripped away. Paul Tracy is out of the car and he's with Gary Gerald. Paul Tracy, have you ever had a string of luck in your racing career like these last three events where you've been a first lap victim? Uh, I mean, I've had a string of bad luck, but really uh, we've gotten past the first lap. It's uh, extremely frustrating for me and for the team. I mean, uh, you know, we're but that's the situation that we're in. I mean, we're starting towards the back of the grid and it's tough back there with uh, everybody moving around. And, uh, you know, we got beside Boisel and uh, just kind of ran out of room and, and uh, he moved over and I, you know, we, we hit and I went up on two wheels, almost flipped over again, like last week. And my 
helmet almost scraped the wall. I was up on my side, so yeah, it's it's frustrating. I mean, uh, I thought we could have done well today, but uh, you know, maybe next week. I'm sure that up until maybe six weeks ago, you still thought you had a great chance to win a championship. Well, I thought so too. I mean, it's uh, it's been definitely frustrating. We've had a frustrating car. We've had a frustrating time on all the road courses this year, and. Uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting next year's car, start testing right away, and, uh, you know, maybe we can uh, build a championship winning car next year. Thank you. Thanks. Well, during that great run earlier this year, Paul Tracy was dominant. As you see, Walter Salas headed for the pits. What a story this team has been this weekend. Financial troubles left them without engines for the weekend, but they managed to get things sorted out in time for Walter to go out in the morning warm-up and put in a lap within 115% of Alex Zanardi's pole time. So card officials decided to let them go out and race. They've got a lot of work ahead of them today. Let's go down to Jan Bikas. Well, we've seen a couple of guys on pit road, and of course, both of those who had mechanical trouble for Walter Salas, like you said, didn't have engines until this morning. What they are doing is they're taking this opportunity under a full course caution to come in, get new tires and fuel. They're out of sequence, but when you're running at the back of the pack, why not bring the car in, make a change? PJ was in the spare car, didn't have a chance to run it. So they're just hoping maybe there's a lot of green and it will pay off in the end. All right, thank you, Jan. Alex Zanardi at the head of the queue. We anticipate the green flag coming out. If Alex leads 12 laps of this race, he will surpass Paul Tracy for most laps led thus far this season. That tells you something about how dominant Paul Tracy was in the first six or seven races of the year. Now Zanardi hoping to get a jump on the field. Gets into the power. Hold a little speed from turn 10 and then sweep onto the start finish straight away looking for the green flag. Bobby Rahal second. Jimmy Vassar in third. And Michelle Jardine is sideways down in turn 10. A local yellow is all for the moment. The green flag is still waving from the flag stand. The car did not look damaged down there. It looks like he just looped it. Of course, he's going fairly slow. See Michael trying to control that coming out of there. The tires are a little cold, jumping around a little sideways as he tries to put the power down. Under the shadows of BC Place, home of the CFL British Columbia Lions, there is Jordan, who had a strong qualifying performance. Now everybody, you can see the car jumping around on that. Every time you see a car going over a bump, oh, he tried to, little Al and him got tangled together. Alenzer Jr. and Michelle Jordan making it three wide down there in the entry to 10. This goes to show you, Bob, there's so few passing places. It's so narrow. You've got to be aggressive and make something happen. But there's so little room down there, it only takes a little tap, and it sets you sideways. Down into turn three, about a 30-mile-an-hour corner for these cars capable of speeds in excess of 200. Watch him trying to shift and hold the car with one hand. What I was saying just a minute ago, if you see the cars bouncing around, if you can visually see them, it is a very rough ride for the driver in there because these cars have very little suspension movement. They're bouncing up and down, and that's very tough on the driver, the car, and particularly the gearbox. This is Michael Andretti's 209th career start, tying his father Mario, who was here this weekend as always, for third on the all-time series list. And Bob, in regards to Michelle Jordan, he has radioed back to the pits here and talked to Dale Coyne and said that, in fact, the car is okay, that he was touched by Al Jr. They had a chance to see the replay as well, but so far they feel as though the car is not damaged. He will continue and not come on pit road until the pit window. And we might also add, John, in that situation that uh, they had to change an engine after the morning warm-up. They were out here, one of the last cars to leave the line. They were sh shaking, checking out a gremlin, and they found a valve spring problem, so they had to make a motor change, then got out here to start the race to have this frustration. Watch Michael Andretti threading his way along behind Mauricio Gugelman in fourth and fifth. Of course, Michael's father, Mario, had lots of starts before the championship auto racing team's organization was founded back in 1979. But in the kart series, Michael and Mario locked together once again in the record book, at least for this weekend here in Vancouver. Fast 
fastest part of the racetrack. That's also the spot where Michael says he's holding on for dear life every time he goes down through that turn two. Ask any of these drivers what it's like to race here at Vancouver, and a lot of them roll their eyes. They are earning their money today. Zanardi leads Ray Hall, Vassar, Gugelman, Andretti, and Herda. We'll be back. Here in Vancouver, the game is about the PPG Cup and a $1 million bonus. Alex Zanardi in the driver's seat, literally as well as figuratively, leading as we work lap number 12, Bobby Rahal, Jimmy Vassar running nose to tail in second and third. Jan Bikas. Well, Bob, you can see that Bobby Rahal is falling back a little bit into the clutches of Jimmy Vassar, and that is because the crew has told him, take care of your rear tires. Make sure that you don't burn the tires up coming off of the corners, like the slow corner he just came off of. So that right now is giving Jimmy Vassar a little bit of a competitive advantage. Now you see the numbers on Bobby Rahal and his battle with Vassar at those speeds it is very difficult to lap this 1.7 mile circuit at an average of over 107 miles an hour one of the difficulties there Bob is that this this circuit is so tough to get a rhythm on you've got to dive down in the corner hit the brakes as late as possible and basically throw the car into the chicane or the tight corners and then try to feed on the power with not getting too much wheel spin Dario Franchini told me he was getting wheel spin in fourth gear. And uh, so that plays into what Bobby Rahal's crew is telling him about save those rear tires. Danny, we were talking with one of the Mercedes engineers about wheel spin in their cars, and they say their computers were showing that even, as you mentioned, in fourth gear, they were getting wheel spin as high as 160 miles per hour, which really seems unusual. But I think that tells you just how tough this circuit is in terms of those bumps and the undulations. And Gary, don't forget that when you have all that wheel spin, it also makes a big difference in fuel economy. If you spin the wheels, you use a lot more fuel, and this track has always been a thirsty one for these cars. Well, the feeling that I'd like was wheel spinning my tires at 160 miles an hour. Man, do I have a lot of horsepower, <laughs> and that's one thing the Mercedes has. Although the teams will tell you that this track is not about horsepower, it's about how much of that horsepower, whether it's Mercedes, Toyota, Ford, or Honda, how much of it you can get to the ground. Battle for seventh between Gilles DeFerrin and Greg Moore as the action continues here at the Molson Indy Vancouver. Bob Parsha, Danny Sullivan, Jan Bikas, and Gary Gerald. Glad to have you with us on a beautiful day here in Vancouver. They've had two weeks of heavy, heavy rain in this part of Canada, and the track was very green when the cars came out on Friday for their first session. The rubber has been laid down and typical of the street circuits. The cars will get faster as that rubber builds up and provides better and better traction. Having said that, we're also beginning to see a lot of marbles, the bits of rubber off these soft tires, building up offline. 15 laps completed is now official. Alex Zanardi, in addition to all of his other records, has now led more laps this year than any other driver in the series. Out from under BC Place into the bright sunshine. Gilda Ferrin, running second in the picture in the red, white, and blue number five, had a heavy crash on Friday when he backed into the wall part of the racetrack we just left. Ray Hall going underneath Hiro Matsushita as the lapping begins. But as we see what that allowed Jimmy Vassar to do was move up on him. So look here. It looks like Jimmy Vassar's losing a little ground to Bobby on the straightaway. Now looking at the upper left. Now that's Alex Zanardi. Alex Zanardi has missed the hairpin. He has missed the hairpin. Bobby Ray Hall. Look, he's coming out behind. He's now in about way back he's going to have to wait for that line of cars to get by they will not let him out until it is safe to do so he wants to go but they've got to give the right away to the guys on the track and see they he stalled it he's going to need a push start let's take another look going down into three just gets in there a little bit late locks up that right front makes a smart decision look i can go up the escape road hopefully won't lose too much ground that was a mistake but if he had tried to turn in there, he would have taken a chance of smacking the wall. There is Chip Ganassi, his car owner. In the background, Mona and the engineer. Was it the bumps that claimed Alex Zanardi right there? 
I would say so. You can go in there just a little bit too far. Michael Andretti told you and I earlier, Bob, that if you get in there just a foot too far, the car starts moving over the bumps. You lose the grip under braking, and it's all over. You just miss the corner by that little bit. New race leader Bobby Rahal with Jimmy Vassar just behind him. Boy, either of these guys, championship or not, would love to pick up a race win here. It's been a long time for both of them. This is the first time Bobby Rahal has led this year since the U.S. 500 at Michigan before he crashed out of the lead there when he got up too high. Bob, any of those first three drivers, uh, Big Mo would like to have a win. They don't care about the championship. They're just trying to score their first win in a long time. You know, Bob and Daddy, this brings to mind, remember the circumstance at Cleveland that started the hot streak for Zanardi this season when he went all the way to the back of the field, and then we watched him make the bonsai run, and he came all the way through to win that rascal. Well, what's he going to do on this circuit? Because you don't have the wide open spaces of Cleveland. He reported nothing on the radio to his crew, totally silent. Right now, Alex Zanardi is listed as 23rd in the field. He has a lot of work ahead of him. He doesn't need to win this race. You can be sure he doesn't want to finish 23rd. We'll be back with more from Vancouver. Here in Vancouver, the story of the moment is that PPG Cup leader Alex Zanardi has spun his way back deep in the field. He went all the way back to 23rd place. He remains in that position, but he is cutting laps fully one second faster than race leader Bobby Rahal. You watch Brian Herta running fifth with Gilles DeFerrin behind him in sixth. And then Greg Moore from Maple Ridge, British Columbia, the huge hometown favorite here in Vancouver. For Alex, he's very upset with himself for making that mistake. Now the pressure's on him. He's got to take chances to get through the field. He can't be gentlemanly. He's going to have to take chances. But he also has something that we've seen in the races past that is a kind of an ace in the hole. He's got a great pit crew who's given him some fabulous stops and jumped up a, quite a few places against some other very, very good crews. So um, he's going to be waiting for that first pit stop to make some ground. They did it two weeks ago at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, where the target Ganassi team took Alex Zanardi from second and put him back out there in first. Bob, a lot of these teams, frankly, tell you as they come into this race day, they say the best place to pass is in the pits. So you know that these pit crews, even though they're more than likely going to be servicing twice on each car today, they're going to feel some pressure when these first stops come up here in not too many laps. P.J. Jones's race is run. He is parked just outside the shadow of B.C. Place. Now he's doing a little fire control on his own. Uh, he's trying to save the car. He doesn't want the car to get burning up. It's one thing on the engine. You can't do much about that, but let's pull, put as much liquid down there. That's also what creates more of that smoke by pouring more liquid down there on those hot things. It just steams up on hot exhaust and so forth. But they look like they're in a good spot to pull him forward a little bit and back him in there behind the wall. No full course caution, only a local caution. Back to Bobby Rahal and Jimmy Vassar running nose to tail. Vassar's been a busy man this weekend. He has founded a record company known as V12 Records in the first group he signed up, known as Groove Bender, featuring his brother Pat. They're playing this weekend here at Vancouver. Jimmy has been there with a front row seat. This is the scene of PJ Jones's engine expiration. Ninth DNF of the year for the son of Parnelli Jones. And now you'll have a yellow coming all the way through because that, that through the tunnel because that corner before that is to look is to tell them that there's a yellow situation around that tricky right hand corner where Gilles DeFerrin crashed the other day. But that is just a local yellow. At Vancouver, Concord Place. Bobby Rahal leads. Jimmy Vassar takes a look down the inside in a battle of former PPG Cart World Series champions running at the front of the field. Rahal, Vassar, Gugelman, Andretti. Brian Herta, Gilles DeFerrin, Greg Moore, Scott Pruitt, Mark Blundell, and Andre Ribeiro, the top ten. The dome of BC Place, creating the shadow through which the cars run and then back out into the brilliant sunshine today here in Vancouver. Bob, as you watch the cars go around, keep in mind on the straightaway, just like Danny Sullivan was saying earlier, that Bobby Rahal, of course, has the Ford power plant. 
Well, at the last race at Elkhart Lake, he had the highest trap speed at 204 miles an hour. So at the end of the straightaway, you get a good look at the difference between a Ford and a Honda of Jimmy Vassar. You ride with Bobby Rahal out front in round 15 of the PPG Card World Series, the Molson Indy Vancouver. Gripping the steering wheel, down shifting, three or four gears, braking hard, turning into the slowest turn on the circuit, 30 mile an hour hairpin. Let's also not forget the situation. We have a Goodyear tire car leading with a Firestone second, a Firestone third, and Goodyear fourth. Firestone is on a streak. They've won the last eight races and 10 of the 14 rounds run thus far this year. And Bobby Rahal said in qualifying that he felt as though the track, as it was run more, came towards the Goodyear. So theoretically, if that plan holds, that will help Michael Andretti, who runs in fourth, and Bobby Rahal, who leads. Well, Jan, the only thing is, I don't know how he knows that unless he was putting Firestones on that car during practice. I mean, it's a good judgment call, but uh, you can only base it on your own experience. You may have a real story there <laughs> from the Honda Helicam. A look high overhead right there, not unlike Shoreline Drive in Long Beach, California. It's Bobby Rahal in blue and white leads the red and yellow car of Jimmy Vassar. These top four, Rahal, Vassar, Gugelman, and Andretti, with about a 6.3 second lead over the fifth place car of Brian Herta. So it's a four car breakaway up front. Pole sitter and early race leader Alex Zanardi spun out at the end of the front straightaway at turn three, or actually continued on to the escape road but he was 23rd when he made his way back onto the racetrack. Right now, he is shown in 20th place, and he continues to lap at nearly a second a lap faster than the cars ahead of him. Working lap number 25 as they pass the start-finish line. There is Alex Zanardi in heavy traffic down in turn three, trying to pick up places as the first pit window begins to come into view. In fact, Brian Herta is already in. This is a shade early, Jan Bikas. Yes, he comes in early. Of course, this would be unscheduled. He has made or asked for no changes. So this may just be a case of them wanting to come in at the earliest possible moment in the window to get him out of sequence. But from what we can tell from the team, there wasn't a problem, just an early stop for Herta. Jan, he was in traffic, so I've got a feeling he just wanted to get out of step of everybody and hopefully get in front of that group. There's the running order. Ray Hall and Vassar up front. Zanardi up to 19th. Plenty of racing still to come. Stand by for more from Vancouver. We had a lead change as Jimmy Vassar went down the inside of Bobby Ray Hall. Right, you can see in the back of this group, the last car back there was Hiro Manchusa, and I think he must have held Bobby up just enough to let Jimmy get up under on the inside. Very clean pass. Bobby wasn't going to do anything, but look at him now. He's got. Big Mo all over him. Mauricio Gugerman, the same move that Jimmy Vassar used to get underneath the only running three-time PPG Card World Series champion, Bobby Rahal. Hey guys, I can tell you what's happening. Bobby Rahal's front tires are going off, and that is the same thing that happened to his teammate, Brian Herta. That is why Brian came into the pits early. He is now on the primary tires instead of the options. When Rahal comes in, he will also take on the Goodyear primaries. You can actually, if you keep that in-car camera, sometimes you can see Bobby's front tires slightly graining. But I guess that tells us that uh, Bobby's theory on the Goodyear tires uh, being better and coming more to life as the uh, run went on wasn't quite accurate. There were 10 laps in the lead for Bobby Rahal, whose last win came 80 starts ago in 1992 on the Oval at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Now, let's check out the pit window. Vassar, Gugelman, and Rahal are all at the window. The yellow lines mean those laps were run under caution. Michael Andretti goes by Bobby Rahal. And all three of those passes have been in the same spot. There we saw Bobby actually lock up the right front, trying to keep Michael behind him. Now we've got two Firestones first and second, but Michael, Goodyear shot in third spot. Michael Andretti has good reason. Look at the rubber building up offline there on the front straight. And look who's right behind him is Jill DeFerrin. DeFerrin needing to move up. As I was saying, Michael Andretti is in the running for a $100,000 bonus if he can win this race and the season finale on the Super Speedway, the California Speedway in Fontana. It's all a part of the MCI Million. 
that would have awarded a $1 million bonus to any driver that could have won on all four designated racetracks that represent the four different types of circuits run in the PPG Kart World Series. Michael won at Homestead. The only other man in the running for the $100,000 bonus for winning three of the four is Mark Blundell, who currently runs eight. He's out Matt just ahead of him. We are under green here in Vancouver. Bob Varsha along with Danny Sullivan up top, Jan Bikas and Gary Gerald patrolling the pit lane. Bobby Rahal has made the first of a scheduled two stops in this 100 lap Molson Indy Vancouver. Rahal led for 10 laps before he was passed by Jimmy Vassar and a string of cars before making his stop as his Goodyear tires went off the boil. Jimmy Vassar leads. You see the intervals to the cars following the race leader. You, you can see all those marbles out there to the right-hand side. The driver does not want to go offline to pass the slower car and get out on there because it just builds up on the tire and makes his car very difficult to drive. Michael Andretti may be holding up Jill DeFerrin and Greg Ward well, just a little bit. Well, remember what Michael told us earlier. He started on the softer tire. He said he had the primary tire, the harder tire, in the pits, but he might be experiencing the same problem that Bobby Rahal was having. There's also Goodyear's on Gilles DeFerrin's car, but not necessarily the same compound on which Michael Andretti started the race. Firestones for Greg Moore. Michael the in the Michael pits. Third. Michael Andretti heads for the pit lane. Sorry to interrupt, Bob, but I just saw him peel off there into the pits. Jan Bikas. Well, it looks like another front tire change here. We're looking carefully, and again, they're not blistered, but you can see there's a whole lot of graining of the tires. In other words, the actual compound is moving on the tire itself. But that was a quick one. That was under, just a little over, I should say, 11 seconds. There's the view from the side pod as Michael Andretti heads back out. Meanwhile, Alex Zanardi, who took himself out of the race lead by going straight on at the hairpin, is now up to 13th place as his teammate Jimmy Vassar holds the lead and Vassar may be scheduled for a pit stop shortly. There is Alex Zanardi just behind Parker Johnstone. That's four position. Johnstone is 12th. And Bob, an update on uh, Zanardi. The telemetry is telling them there may be a problem with tire pressure on one of the rear tires. He's not reporting any vibration, but that's what that telemetry and those tire sensors are for. They'll obviously check that as he'll be pitting shortly. We expect Vassar on the next lap. Alex Zanardi passes John Stone for 12th. And I'm very surprised at that pass because Zanardi wasn't deep enough into the corner to give it. It was almost like Parker moved over thinking that uh, he was being lapped by Alex Zanardi. Uh, that was for position. I wouldn't have moved over that, uh, that easily. Zanardi sliding through the corners. Look at that buildup. You could just imagine what happens to the tires if you get offline. Pit stops expected shortly by more of the front running cars. We'll take a break and return with more of the Molson Indy Vancouver in just a moment. Back in Vancouver, race leader Jimmy Vassar is in for his first stop. Gary Gerald is there. Bob, you mentioned the fact that this crew, with Zanardi in recent places, has had some sensational stops that got their driver out quickly. Now Vassar's hoping for the same. First time for him to lead a race since Gateway back in May at St. Louis. Got him rolling in 12.7 seconds. Jimmy Vassar heads back onto the racetrack. Meanwhile, moments ago, Bobby Rahal, who led 10 laps of this race from the front row, has climbed out of his car. Jan Bikas is there. And Bobby, what a great race you had going. What put you out? Well, first, the, uh, you know, the, the tire wear in the rear was excessive. It went Vassar, and everybody got by me. I couldn't break into the corners very deep. But in the end, the, en the engine broke. You know, uh, we had a good pit stop making progress and then the engine just broke. Any indication that it was going sour or just all of a sudden? Uh, that's boom. All right, well, better luck at Laguna. I hope. New race leader Mauricio Gugelman now makes his first stop. This on lap number 38, Gary Gerald. Watching the Pac West team. He is at the very last pit on pit road, so he's got a clear run now to leave the, and he doesn't have to worry about the speed limit. Water bottle just came flying over the wall and we caught it. Didn't intend to. Got him running in 14 seconds. 
Greg Moore is also in the pits as Mauricio Gugelman heads back out. Christian Fittipaldi has also come in and gone out. Once again, our pictures coming to us from Polestar Sports Entertainment here in Canada. They are not our cameras. Mauricio Guzman coming back up to speed from that very slow hairpin. Jimmy Vassar two cars ahead, sandwiching Adrian Fernandez. down into turn 10 headed for the start finish line the race leader is Jimmy Vassar the pit stops have jumbled the order slightly there's always that reshuffle Bob when they're when the people are stopping some have some have not all scrambling around takes a couple laps for everything to settle back down everybody figure out exactly where they are for us to figure out where they are as well. Jimmy Vassar, the race leader, trailing Allenzer Jr. as they go around Parker Johnstone and the Team Green Machine. You see Allenzer Jr.'s progress from a 22nd starting position, his worst in many years. He's worked his way up as high as 15th before dropping back a couple of places. Parker Johnstone shown in 14th position. Now you got to remember we haven't seen Allen Jr. come into the pit so he's running on light fuel. Jimmy Vassar's on full fuel but Jimmy's got new tires. And Allen Jr. does not. Allen Jr. holding up. The race leader slightly. The order behind Vassar. Gugelman. Andretti. DeFerrin. Greg Moore. Scott Pruitt. Mark Blundell. Andre Ribeiro. Brian Herta and Christian Fittipaldi. Of course, Al Jr. does not want to let him get himself get lapped. He will when they go into the pits, but he does not want to lose that lap. And this is the best thing happening to a Big Mo. Forty laps complete. You see the interval from each car in the order up to the front runner in the race, which right now is Jimmy Vassar, who has been very gracious about his teammates' success this year. Oh, he locked up a right front there. That's not what you want to do early on in a run. And flat spot that tire. He's lost some ground. Allen Jr. I stand corrected. The scoring monitor shows that Al Jr. has made his pit stop. So I stand corrected, and now he's pulling away. I missed that stop as well. As I said, for us up here as well, it takes a little time for the for everything to catch up and do the shuffle and uh, us figure out exactly where everybody is. are talking about Jimmy Vassar and in particular how gracious he has been about Zanardi's accomplishments. One of the things that has really helped Jimmy Vassar this weekend is he has stopped taking the information from Zanardi's crew and engineer because he now realizes that he has a much different driving style and if he just ignores what Zanardi uses on his car, focuses on his own effort, he says that has really revitalized he and his engineer this weekend. And Jan, let's update a situation for his teammate Zanardi. Even now with the field shaking out after the first round of pit stops, Zanardi back up at mid-pack in the number 12 position. But the crew has confirmed that there is a concern with the brakes. They're asking him to try to conserve the brakes. That, I think, is going to complicate his willingness or his tendency to want to be able to charge as he's come from 23rd up to 12th. There's Mauricio Gugelman. Both he and his teammate Mark Blundell have signed new contracts this weekend, so they'll be back with Bruce McCaw's Pac West team in 1998. There is Michael Andretti resetting our championship situation. Alex Zanardi came in with the points lead and runs 12th. Gilles DeFerrin, second in points, is fourth. Paul Tracy, third in points coming in, dropped out on lap one. Greg Moore and Michael Andretti still in the hunt as well. We'll be back with more from Vancouver. Now, moments ago, the yellow flag came out when Richie Hearn was unceremoniously driven off the racetrack by Michelle Jourdain Jr. Both drivers are now out of the race, and we have just gone back to green. 
Jimmy Vassar up front, but this yellow flag helps a couple of drivers back in the field, notably Al Enzer Jr. and Alex Zanardi. And it didn't exactly hurt Big Mo and Michael Andretti right there because it bunched them up to Jimmy Vassar, closed that gap up. That was not a pass for position. Parker Johnstone runs in 15th place, a lap down. The order is Vassar, Gugelman, Andretti, DeFerrin, Moore, Pruitt, Blundell, Herta, Fittipaldi, and in 10th place, Alex Zanardi, the points leader and pole sitter coming into this race. He went off the track at the end of the front straightaway, came back on in 23rd, and there he is right there, working his way up. Oh, and one of the, one of the Brahma cars is into the wall. I believe that's Scott Pruitt is into the tires in the chicane. Yes, it's Pruitt. Left See rear this? tire is down. Yes, I think he got punted from behind, probably flattened that tire, sent him sideways. And look at that, look at that. Christian Fittipaldi just hit Brian Herta. And, and right there on top was, it looked like uh, Mark Blundell got a little bit up in the air as well. That was in turn 10. You ride with Christian Fittipaldi, no sign of yellow flags. There's Jimmy Vassar, the leader, Mauricio Gugel in second, and Michael Andretti in third. Jill DeFerrin in fourth, Greg Mufit, and Alex Zanardi is now in sixth place as a result of all those collisions on the first lap following the restart. And the yellow flags come back out. Our third full course caution of the day. A very sloppy first lap after that restart. Max Pappas going very slowly. As you watch Al Lenzer Jr. This is what happens here at Vancouver. People are trying to make things happen. They're all bunched up. They think this is my opportunity. Alex and Artie going out there very wide. Look at that. All the way underneath. That looks like it's uh, Adrian Fernandez. Adrian Fernandez and Scott Pruitt came together. Now down in turn 10. Christian Fittipaldi looks underneath. Brian Herta turns in. In the white car, that's Brian Herta. Christian Fittipaldi was on the inside. Now look back in the in the field. Look, Brian Herter gets through this. We're right here in this part of the screen up there. Completely over the top of Adrian Fernandez. Damage obviously to his car. Well, there must have been rubber to rubber contact to launch one car. Let's look from look at Alex that. Zanardi's onboard camera. An amazing collision between Fernandez and watch as Zanardi seeing no yellow flags around the racetrack takes he, full advantage. He took full advantage of that. That put Brian Herta, he had to slow, put him back in the pack. We have another full course caution. We'll take a moment, get things sorted out and be back with more of the Molson Indy Vancouver. Stay with us. Welcome back to Concord Pacific Place in Vancouver, British Columbia, about to come off our third full course caution of the day after the most phenomenal tangle between Scott Pruitt and Adrian Fernandez. Look at the lower part of your screen as Pruitt's car goes up and over the roll bar of Adrian Fernandez's car. Alex Zanardi took advantage to pick up a couple of positions. Brian Herto, one of two cars that made a quick pit stop under the yellow. And we are ready to go green once again. Jimmy Vassar leads Mauricio Gugelmi, Michael Andretti, Gilles DeFerrin, Greg Moore, and Alex Zanardi, who was once 23rd in this field. He is now up to sixth as he pursues the PPG Cup and a $1 million bonus today. And Bob, it's interesting because there are still problems for Zanardi. On an intermittent basis, he's experiencing what the drivers call a long pedal. You go to put that brake down, and nothing happens initially. But as I say, it's on an intermittent basis. They're very concerned, but hey, right now everything's going his way. He's up to sixth. Now Jan Bikas is standing by with one of the two drivers involved in that incident, Adrian Fernandez. Yes, and he watched the replay with us. That was a very scary moment. Was it worse in the car or when you watched the replay? Actually, I, I didn't feel much. I mean, it wasn't an impact or anything. I knew he was about me, but I uh, have to tell you, I feel sorry for Scott because he, I was trying to stay away from him uh, because I was not fighting with him. I was having a lot of problems with my car. So I opened a gap as much as I can to let him go and unfortunately didn't work. This is the problem to run in this type of track where you, there is not enough room and uh, the, the outside line of the track is very, there's a lot of marbles and that's really a big problem. So I did my best and I feel sorry for, for Scott in that situation. And guys, the car held up very nicely. The roll bar was torn up, but thankfully he's okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Jan and Adrian. You ride with Alex Zanardi 
in sixth place chasing Greg Moore. Now here's how the championship stands. Zanardi, who came in with the points lead, runs in sixth place. That still could be enough for him to clinch if things unfold his way in the second half of this race. Jill DeFerrin, second in points, runs fourth. Paul Tracy, third in points coming in. He is out on lap one. Greg Moore, fourth in points, runs fifth in the race right now. And Michael Andretti, fifth in points, is in third place. Basically, everyone is eliminated from the title chase except points leader Alex Zanardi and second in points, Jill DeFerrin. Up through the gearbox with Alex Zanardi, the points leader, as he chases Greg Moore for fifth place in the Molson Indy Vancouver. And we've been watching Zanardi's car for any sign of a mechanical problem. This is for position. Inside Moore, the local hero, goes Alex Zanardi for fifth place. Well, Alex just dove down in the inside, made a very clean pass, but very assertive. He just, he just didn't just stick his nose in there, he stuck the whole car down there, made a very good pass. That gives Alex Zanardi a 37-point lead over Gilles de Ferrin for the championship if things ended right now. We still have two full races to go, as well as a point for laps led and the finishing points on well, look how, here in Vancouver. Look at Zanardi, he's getting in there very deep, locking up, he's trying very hard. If he's having some brake problems, he's not showing it there. Notice our at the line graphic at the upper left, including a yellow arrowhead that shows you which car has completed the fastest lap of those shown on the screen. Gilles de Ferrin, the quickest on that last lap. Alex Zanardi, second fastest. Mauricio Guzman, the third fastest car on the track. See how the normal streets are worked into making a racetrack, but they are off camber, a lot of oil down on the ground, not made for racing cars. All part of the challenge of racing on temporary circuits. Andre Ribeiro flashes through the screen. Jill DeFerrin, Alex Zanardi, and then Greg Moore. Zanardi has pulled away from Moore. And is closing quite quickly on Jill DeFerrin. Who's that red, white, and blue car right in front of Alex Zanardi? Zanardi is being told by his owner, Chip Ganassi, to take it easy. He's trying to get him to plead a little bit of patience at this point since we got plenty of racing yet to go. But there was an earlier conversation after that initial screw up that sent him back to 23rd. He said, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to win this thing. They've done it before, they did it in Cleveland. Alex Zanardi is flying. Here are the lap times for the cars ahead of Alex Zanardi. 57-2, 57-3, 57-2, 58-7, Alex Zanardi, 56-1. You don't have to do too many laps like that to close down that gap, but he's not that far behind the leading gap. Drew, he doesn't have to very far to go, but he's got some fairly tough guys to pass. Jill DeFerrin right there in his sights. He's the next one on his hit list. And Jill DeFerrin, more than anybody else on this racetrack, needs to keep Alex Zanardi behind him. The way things stand right now, the other four contenders for the title besides Zanardi are all in danger of being eliminated as you ride with Roberto Moreno. The only man with a shot right now is Jill DeFerrin, as long as he can stay ahead of the points leader. We'll be back with more from Vancouver in a moment. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Molson Indy Vancouver is being brought to you by American Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles, motorcycles, and power equipment. By Splitfire, enter the performance zone with Splitfire Performance B spark plugs. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. 36 laps remain in the Molson Indy Vancouver, but the race has been run for local favorite Greg Moore. Gary Gerald. A problem on the left front, obvious contact as the suspension and the wheel have been damaged. More through the steering wheel out, climbed out of the car. And uh, with cheers from the crowd behind us, we'll go back and take a look. look, Alex. look. There's Alex Zanardi going down the inside of Gilles DeFerrin. Seems to be his favorite passing spot. He really gets in there deep. 
See him in the back of your screen, right up in here. He made a very clean pass there. Squirming I'm, slightly I'm, under braking as he turns in. I'm a little bit surprised. He must surprise those guys. They must think he's not going to pass them because that's one of the key passing spots around this track. And you'd be protecting that position if he's that close to you. DeFerrin was way over to the driver's left, giving Zanardi more than enough room to get by. So Zanardi now up into fourth. And that's a four-point swing in the championship. And But also, look in those shots. Look how far back Gilles DeFerrin has fallen. He's not even a half a lap. Look at the ground. He's obviously got some kind of a problem to lose that kind of ground. So Zanardi in a half a lap. The order is Vassar, Guzelman, Andretti, Alex Zanardi from 23rd, now up to fourth. Jill DeFerrin is fifth, Christian Fittipaldi sixth, Dario Franchini seventh, Raul Boisel eighth, Roberto Moreno ninth, substituting for the injured Patrick Carpentier, and Brian Herta runs tenth. Zanardi going down the inside of the lapped car of Andre Ribeiro. He's going down the inside of a lap car, but Andre Ribeiro has been running in that pack with the leaders, not holding anybody up. Again, Zanardi made a fabulous move down there, and we've been hearing from uh, Gary that he had brake problems. That's one of the hardest places to brake. You're coming down from about 180 miles an hour to down there about 40. There is Michael Andretti. He will be Alex Zanardi's next target. Right now, Zanardi runs about 1.1 seconds behind. Now, Alex Zanardi leads Gilles DeFerrin by 41 points for the PPG Cup. It's not quite enough. From 185 miles an hour, perhaps, down through the gearbox, hard on the brakes, turning in for the hairpin is Alex Zanardi, who came in with a points lead, who still holds it, but not by enough as things presently stand to clinch the PPG Cup and the million dollar bonus here at the Molson Indy Vancouver. The points right now, Alex Zanardi with 181, Gilles DeFerrin, the only other man in contention with 140. Paul Tracy was third in points coming in, but he crashed out on lap one. Mauricio Guzman runs second, Michael Andretti third, and then Zanardi. Gary Gerald is with Greg Moore. Well, another of the contenders who's had tough luck, Greg. What happened? Uh, just went into the final chicane there and just um, touched the wall a tiny little bit with the left front vents and suspension. You know, I feel real bad for my guys. You know, they worked awfully hard. I think we had a top three card today, but um, we'll have to get them in Laguna. Is this one of those cases where it's hard to be patient and you get overly aggressive? Uh, you, you know, you want to be aggressive, but you got to be patient. And, you know, I think I was being as patient as I could have been. You know, it's just. You know, I didn't pass really anybody on the track. My guys got me some guy, a couple spots in the pits, and that was good. But, um, you know, I just, just a little touch with the wall, bent some suspension, and that's it for today. Thank you. Thanks. And with that, the dream of the PPG Cup is over for the 22-year-old Greg Moore. Now let's update the stories we've been following as the day has gone on with 32 laps remaining. Hans and Artie Clinch, he started first, went off track, dropped back to 23rd, and has worked his way back up to fourth. Staying out of trouble has been the key. Paul Tracy went out on the first lap. Greg Moore knows all about that as well. Riding the bumps. Well, right now, Jimmy Vassar is the guy who's done that best. He is leading the race. Michael Andretti is third. Al Unser Jr., 11th. The only two former winners of this race. Um, in regards to Alex Zanardi, you get the feeling that he's starting to chomp the bit, and the crew now has given him the green light to go up one on boost. That tells me that uh, he may be charging even harder now. He is charging harder. He has just gone down the inside of Michael Andretti in turn three for third place. Alex Zanardi is just working this traffic. And now runs in third. And Bob, Michael Andretti has been on the radio with his crew, and they are trying to make a decision on what tires to use. He started the race on the softer option Goodyears, then he changed to the primary. Now he's not sure. The car's getting slick. They've now decided to stay with the primary tire. Alex Zanardi needs just one more championship point to clinch the PPG Cup. He runs third. His next target, Mauricio Guzman, about a second and a half up the road. We'll be back. Left tire. Back in Vancouver, Michael Andretti heads for the pit lane with black streaks of rubber behind him. Looks like that left front tire's down. Jan Bikas 
It is, in fact, the left front tire has gone down. No indication of why. We're checking to see if there's any marks on the wheel in case there was contact. Oh, but now you can see the suspension is bent on the left front for Michael Andretti. They've shut the engine off. Michael Andretti's race is run. Just now you can see the bend. suspension right there, just where it's bent. But it's obviously enough that the crew thinks that it's not safe. Well, it may help explain why Bill, uh, excuse me, why Alex Zanardi got by Michael Andretti for third quite as easily as he did. So Michael Andretti, the defending race champion, is out. It appears we have a new name on the list of winners of the Molson Indy Vancouver. We have 28 laps remaining. Here is Jimmy Vassar, Mauricio Gilgeman, and here comes Alex Zanardi down the inside, going for second. A look at the fuel and window. And Big Mo's gonna go back up the inside. Is oh. it gonna be enough? Alex got in there awful deep. Some fight out of someone resisting Alex Zanardi. Who drops back to third place. That could have been a potentially title clinching pass for Zanardi, who continues to lap quicker than anybody else on the racetrack. Back by a considerable amount. Jimmy Vassar's last lap 56 2, Gugelman's 56 4, Alex Zanardi 55 6. All right, and look at this Alex Zanardi gone in deep again. Maybe he is having braking problems. He went in there very deep, lost a lot of ground. He didn't want another taste of that escape road and watch well, the field go by. Right, and that escape road's not so good over there. You can't just do a new turn and come back out the other end. That gives Big Mo some uh, breathing room. This is Roberto Moreno driving for Patrick Carpentier, who broke his left collarbone in a bicycling accident in Indianapolis last week. Moreno runs in 11th place for Tony Bettenhausen and the Alumax team. One of the things that Alex has got to be careful of is he doesn't need to make a mistake. He's up in third spot, score those points, still take a chance. Everybody else is in the championship, throwing it out the window. Paul Tracy, Michael Andretti, Greg Moore. Into the pits, into the pits comes Jimmy Vassar, the race leader. And look, he's, he's chugging. His head's going forward. It's like he's out of gas. Gary Gerald awaits him. Along with the crew, here he is. Motor is running as he gets in here. Had excellent service the first time round. Leading a race consistently for the first time since the month of May. Everything's routine. They want to get every bit of fuel. Revs up. Oh, it's taking, there's very little fuel in the house. Now he goes. Not particularly fast, but they got every bit of fuel that was available. I think Zanardi will be in in the next lap. I think that chugging down the pit road was he was probably hitting the speed control button. He wanted to go fast, but it was just holding the car back like it's supposed to do. Well, the final pit stop is complete for Jimmy Vassar, who comes back out onto the racetrack from the race lead. More pit action here at the Molson Indy Vancouver. One of the cars in, Mauricio Gugelman, who assumed the race lead when Vassar made his stop. 60 mile an hour pit lane speed limit. The target Ganassi team awaits Alex Zanardi. He too is in. Now this is for a position. These guys in the pits, that is second and third. And help win a race at Elkhart. 25 laps remain in the race. Mauricio Gugelman out first. Once again, the Ganassi team keeping their man in for a long time. Now Zanardi is back out as well. That is Jimmy Vassar slewing into view behind Mauricio Gugelman. Now Jimmy Vassar is on hot tires while Mauricio Gugelman will be bringing his up to temperature. Look at Vassar close on Gugelman. And that's for a very critical spot, as in first. Oh, it looks like Vassar ran up a little too close coming out into the sunshine. He needs to get in front of him before Big Mo gets those tires up to temperature. This is going to be a critical spot down into this next corner. Turn 10 coming up. Oh, Jimmy's really locked up there. That is going to hurt him a lot because he held on to that a long time with a locked up brake. 
that's going to flat spot that right front tire and hurt him as the run goes on. Castle remains a car length back. As they head for turn three, another obvious passing spot, but no, the reigning champion cannot get it done against Guzman. Meanwhile, in the pit lane, Michael Andretti is standing by. Take it away, Jan. Well, Michael, I know that you're watching this battle as well on the big screen. There's great racing out there. I know you wanted to be part of it. Where did you make contact and how did it happen? Um, going into the second chicane, I hit the inside wall. I just. I was just driving too hard to try to keep up. My my tires were going off really bad, and I was trying to keep up with the Firestones, and uh, I just made a mistake just driving too hard. Can you believe that Zanardi went all the way back to 22nd position and then had the kind of speed he did when he caught you? Yeah, his car was hooked up. I mean, he could just put the power down, and, uh, you know, that that's the difference. All right, Michael Andretti, the tires went off. Now he's on the sidelines. And so another potential PPG Cup champion has fallen by the wayside. Race leader Gilles DeFerrin has made his pit stop. Brian Hurt has shown up front. We'll be back. Here at Vancouver, the race leader is Brian Hurta, who just went out the bottom of your screen. Here comes Mauricio Guzman in second. Gilles DeFerrin runs in third. There is Jimmy Vassar. Excuse me. Jimmy Vassar is third as our timing and scoring adjust to the obvious. Gilles DeFerrin. Dropping down during his pit stop. Alex Zanardi currently in fourth. Bob, Jimmy Vassar's losing a lot of ground. I'm sorry, Gary, but Jimmy Vassar's losing a lot of ground to Big Mo. I'm not so sure he didn't have a tire problem after that big lockup over there. And I was just going to mention that for DeFerrin, it was routine service, no changes on the car, tires and fuel only getting back out for Derek Walker. Mauricio Guzman, his teammate Mark Blundell, has won twice this year. Guzman's qualifying has been the best of the bunch, averaging about fourth position every time he goes out to take his place on the grid. But he is still looking for that elusive first victory. Alex Zanardi bottled up behind Parker Johnstone. Johnstone in 13, heads for the pit lane. Alex Zanardi now has clear track in front of him. Only two men remain in the running for the PPG Cup. Alex Zanardi, with whom you ride, and Gilles de Ferrin. Zanardi runs in fourth, de Ferrin in sixth. There is Brian Herda. Bright sunshine on the start finish straight away here at Concord Pacific Places. Race leader Brian Herda crosses the stripe to complete 80 laps of 100 schedule here at the Molson Indy Vancouver. Bob Varsha, Danny Sullivan, Jan Bikas, and Gary Gerald with you. The order is Herda, Gujalmin, Jimmy Vassar, and then this man, Alex Zanardi, who came in with a shot at the PPG Cup and its $1 million bonus. He still needs a point over Gilles DeFerrin, who runs sixth to clinch here in Vancouver, or the title fight will go on to next week's race in Monterey, California. Alex Zanardi, much quicker on that last lap than any of the men ahead of him. Now a look at the fuel window. Brian Herda did not pit, along with Guzman, Vassar, and Zanardi, who run behind him. He's within roughly six laps of the beginning of his fuel window. Bob, let's not forget, he got tapped and was half spun in that one corner at that, at that crazy restart. And he went ahead and pitted, so he pitted later than everybody else, topped it up. The word from the pits is Brian Herta will need a splash of fuel. He cannot complete the 19 laps remaining in this race without some extra fuel. And let me tell you, Big Mo is going to be very tough with uh, 19 laps remaining and his first win in sight, he is going to be awful tough. He's been a little bit upset that uh, Mark Blundell got the first two wins for Pac West. He was kind of the team leader, felt that he was right there, qualifying always great, and now he's poised to take his first IndyCar win. Take a look at the nose of Brian Hurt's car. You see the rubber, either contact with somebody else's wheel or perhaps 
Took a shot of one of these marbles bouncing off the car. The intervals between the top four. There goes Alex Zanardi. Back up front to Herta. You see that he is being caught slowly but surely by Mauricio Gugelman. And behind Gugelman by Vassar and Zanardi. Eighteen laps remaining in the race. 18 laps to a possible first victory. Oh, and Alex Zanardi is in the runoff again, down in turn three. But he's stalled. He's stalled. That's why he cannot go forward there. He has stalled the car. That's why he's signaling everybody, push me, push me, push me. Please, I've got to get going. Please, look, he's begging there. <laughs> so much he's for giving praying. orders. Now we're praying. But, you know, that's a very difficult spot for the workers to come out because they're in the braking zone. If somebody locks them up, they're in danger. Look at Chip going, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. His team won the title last year with Jimmy Vassar going for two in a row. No team has done that since Penske Racing did it with two different drivers back in the early 80s. Now Alex Zanardi has the engine running again, but he's going to have to wait. But there was Big Mo. He's in second spot, but when Brian Herdo pits, he'll probably take the lead there. That means he's a lap behind the leader. With 17 laps remaining. There goes Gugelman. Running in second place to Herda. Gugelman had a taste of getting within, almost within view of your first checkered flag of the year. He did it on Belle Isle in the Detroit River earlier this year before he ran out of fuel on the last lap as did his teammate Mark Blundell, and Greg Moore came through to take his second of two straight victories. Right now, Brian Herta has a shot at win, as he did at Mid-Ohio earlier this year. Jill DeFerrin runs fifth. We'll be back. Welcome back to Concord Pacific Place. Round 15 of the PPG Card World Series, the Molson Indy Vancouver, and the top three have closed up. Make that the top. Four cars closing up. Allinger Jr., who started 22nd in this field, is up to fourth as you ride with Alex Zanardi, who started on pole, went off the track, dropped back to 23rd place, worked his way back to fourth, and then went off again. Right now, Zanardi shown in 10th place, a lap down. Now he just got his lap back on Big Mo. He's trying to do it on Brian Herta, who's right there leading the race, hoping that a yellow would come out and it put him back to the back of the field. Big Mo was not concerned about that, was not going to get into a battle, take a chance of getting knocked off. He knows Brian Herta has got to make a stop before the end of this race, and he's sitting in the catbird seat. Danny, we can't help but wonder down here watching the reaction of the crew for Zanardi if, in fact, it was that brake problem again. He may have gone to the pedal and nothing happened that cost him into the runoff area. Same spot. Gary, I think that's right. He's probably having some braking problems, but he locked up again getting down in there. He just missed the hairpin and stalled the car. And my question would be if your car's working that good and you're already up to third and you've got a brake problem, you've got to back off a little bit. But we do not know what's going on in that cockpit. Here's a guy very talented, obviously poised to win his cha first championship. Look right there. He's sneaking down the inside of Brian. Oh, I think they oh. touched. I think he touched with Brian Herta. Oh, from our Honda Helicam, you saw the both cars were balked slightly. Oh, oh there. Herta touches him, and the race leader is in the tires. And I can't believe it. So Nardi wanted that lap back, just dove up the inside, bang, Brian, and pushed him right off into the wall. I believe Alex Zanardi might be in for some criticism after this race. We have a full course caution, Brian Herta who lost his race lead at Mid-Ohio earlier this year when a tire went down. The man who passed him and took the win was Alex Zanardi. They were bottled up behind a slower car in the hairpin. Then they got to this corner. Zanardi forced the issue up the inside, fully alongside Brian Herta, it must be said. And then they touched wheels. But Brian's already turning into the corner right here. Brian's in there. He's, he's not seen him, bangs him. Zanardi once again escapes, but I've really got to say that's Zanardi's fault there. He was way down on the lead. That was the leader of the race. Another look from overhead. I can't believe Zanardi's car wasn't damaged in that collision. I can't either. Once again, just like in Australia, when he banged with wheels with Paul Tracy, he comes away unscathed. 
and Brian Hurdle is in the fence. I really have got to believe that that is Zanardi's over enthusiasm for the mistakes that were made during this caused that accident. Brian Herta getting pushed and he is back underway. The safety car coming up from behind. You are on board now with Alex Zanardi, who has certainly had an up and down day struggling to win his first championship. But no matter how he manages to win that championship, Alex Zanardi is ready. Alex Zanardi's rise to the brink of the PPG Cup Championship has been a model of efficiency. Eight victories in 30 starts over two seasons. All we've been saying to ourselves is, is uh, look, I mean, we know that we can do it. And with good reason, last year driver turned car owner Chip Ganassi and his team dominated. Jimmy Vassar won four times in the first six races and never looked back en route to the championship. While Zanardi swept to Rookie of the Year honors, capped by the famous Laguna Seca Pass, putting an exclamation point on a dream season. This year, however, Zanardi is finished with being a bridesmaid. That's something that burns inside myself. You know, I'm always being a, a very good second, but uh, it's time for me to to finally step on that uh, on that last step of the podium. So I, 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 want, I want to try. There is so many important things in life that if I won't, if I won't get it for reasons that are behind my, of my control, I won't make a drama out of it. I know that uh, you need also to be lucky. And if I will win the championship this year, I will have to say to you, I got lucky, you know. And, uh, you know, sure enough, I did my part. I did the best I could but I got lucky as well. Lucky or not, Alex Zanardi, his passionate driving and his trademark victory donuts have made an indelible mark on the PPG Kart World Series, and in the eyes of many, the cup would be a fitting reward. Well, right now it's a two-man battle for the PPG Cup. Alex Zanardi currently shown in ninth place, and Jill DeFerrin, who is in third place. If the points were to be awarded right now, Alex Zanardi would lead the championship by 29 points with 44 still to be won. Jimmy Vassar has led the most laps in the race. There is Brian Herta, who was bumped out of the lead in a collision with Alex Zanardi just moments ago, bringing out our fourth full course caution of the day. You know, we've talked about Alex Zanardi, but I think we've got to tip our hat to Alan or Jr who started back in what 22nd spot in the race and he's worked his way up to fourth and he's we haven't seen a lot of uh, pizzazz out of him all day but he steadily worked his way up there pulled away from Jimmy Vassar and the green flag waves once again Mauricio Gugelman now in the lead Jimmy Vassar second Jill DeFerrin third Al Unser Jr. in fourth right there behind Juan Fangio Raul Boisel runs fifth Dario Franchitti sixth High above, turn three, the hairpin. There's Alenzer Jr. in red and white following the green and white car of Fangio. And Poisel, oh, Red look at that. Ooh, Mark Blundell in the and blue and white car. Party. And Alex Zanardi flashing through the field. He is on a tear. He has certainly given us some excitement all day. I'm not so sure the other drivers will agree with what he's done, but uh, he has been fast. Boy, look at the lead that. Mauricio Guzman has been able to pull out over Vassar and DeFerrin. I still think that thing with Vassar comes back to the problem that he had was that flat spot of that tire trying to get up past Big Mo early on. He really locked it up, and I bet you that's causing him some problems. Flying at you at 185 miles an hour, Mauricio Guzman leads the Molson Indy Vancouver. We'll take a break and return. Ten laps remaining in the race. And in Zanardi's Vancouver, Alex Zanardi trying to force the issue in turn three, Again. almost met with a catastrophe. I didn't mean to interrupt. He's tried so many times down there at turn three, made so many good passes, that I think he thinks he's invincible down there. But, uh, you know, it's late in the race. Some other guys have some very good handling cars, and they don't want to give up spots. A lot of these positions right now or for points. That car right in front of him is Dario Franchitti, who's trying to win the Rookie of the Year award. He doesn't want to give up a spot to Alex Zanardi. Look at the lockup on Zanardi's car as he almost collides with the back of Franchitti's machine. Then he gets back on and it chases him around the corner. 
and Zanardi driving. Let's see what adjective would I choose. And there's another guy in the field that I would look Ooh, for. Oh, down the inside front, Keaty collides with Raul Boisel. That was for position. Frankini going after fifth, and he got it, but not without contact. And Alex Nardi is going to take Frankini because of that. He got by one and lost one. So in the space of about 200 yards, Raul Boisel goes from fifth to seventh. Dario Frankini goes from sixth to fifth, back to sixth, as Alex Zanardi goes from seventh to fifth. This is racing at Vancouver, particularly in the closing stages of the race. A lot of people have things that they need to make happen, and there's not a lot of space. Smoke off of Frank Eady's front wheel, uh, Zanardi getting sideways, and we've still got a battle at the front, which we're forgetting about, which is Jill DeFerrin, who's behind Jimmy Basser, who wants that second place points because of his championship hopes. As things stand right now, the PPG Cup is not won for Alex Zanardi. And the series will move on to Monterey, California. We have eight laps remaining. Sometimes you wonder if a racing driver thinks a car is an extension of his body to be protected or simply a tool in his hands to be used. That car that he's right behind, that red and white car, is Alan Sir Jr. This guy's been through the wars, and that is for a position. Alan Sir Jr. has won the war on the streets of Vancouver four times, most recently in 1995. The points right now show a lead for Alex Zanardi over Gilles DeFerrin by 35, with 44 still up for grabs in the final two races of the year. Now, will Zanardi try a move on Alan Sir Jr. down in three? That's been his favorite spot of, of late, so I've got to believe He's going to have a go there. He does. He goes down the inside. Does he have enough? Smoke off the tire. Allen Sir Jr. back up. Look at this. Wheel to wheel. Oh, he tapped him. He got him a little sideways there. Made a move down the inside. Look at this. Frank Keaty's trying to make a move. Amazing nose to tail action here in Vancouver in the closing laps of the Molten Indy. Alex Zanardi now up to fourth place ahead of Alonzo Jr. I think that twitch from Alonzo Jr. may have been when he looked to his left and saw that Zanardi was there. Don't forget he's also on the outside of a left-hander. It's dirty out there. He might have gotten on a little grit. The marble slid in a little sideways. This is the Vancouver bang and dash. We're, we're having great racing here at the end. Parker Johnstone maybe said it best. He called it a slugfest every year here in Vancouver. There is Gilles DeFerrin. He is third and still within mathematical striking distance of Alex Zanardi for the championship. He is ahead of Zanardi on the racetrack by just about 10 seconds. Bob, there's so much going on right here. Big Mo wants his first win. Jimmy Bassett wants a great result. He's had a great weekend all, already. Jill DeFerrin wants more points, another podium finish. He'd like to move up into that second, get a couple of more points. Zanardi's trying to get more points. Franchini points for the rookie of the year. Al Jr., a good result. It just goes on and on. There is Jill DeFerrin, who had a heavy crash when he backed it into the wall under the BC Place Stadium on Friday. They put together the backup car, waived their Friday qualifying time, went with the backup car, put it up high on the grid, and Jill DeFerrin runs in third place, still alive in the run for the million-dollar PPG Cup. A handful of laps remain. We'll be back for a checkered flag here on the streets of Vancouver. Stand by. We could have a first-time winner. What an amazing day it has been here in Vancouver, British Columbia at the Molson Indy Vancouver. 15th round of 17 in the PPG Kart World Series. The day began somberly after the tragic events last night in which Diana... Oh, Dario Franchini has gone straight on. Rookie leader Patrick Carpentier is injured and is not in the race. The door was open for Dario Franchitti to pick up points in the Rookie of the Year chase. He may yet do it, but for the moment, he is stuffed into the tires from sixth place. I was going to say that after the tragedy in Paris last night in which the Princess of Wales and several other people were killed, Canada, of course, is a part of the British Commonwealth. The flags are at half staff. It was a very somber morning with speeches and moments of silence. But then it was showtime as the racers got underway. And what a race it's been. Bolsonaro, Alex Zanardi in the running for the PPG Cup. 
off the track and on twice during the race. Has dropped to the back, come forward, drop back again. He currently runs in fourth place. Not enough to clinch the cup because that man in red and white, the number five car of Gilles de Ferrin, runs third. This man, Mauricio Gugelman, is the race leader looking for his first career PPG Kart World Series victory. With his hand on the joystick of the computer in the timing stand, car owner Bruce McCaw has seen his driver Mark Blundell win twice this year. He may see Mauricio Gugelman take his first. Three laps to go of this 1.7 mile circuit. And Bob, remember what happened at Belle Isle in Detroit for Mauricio Gugelman when he was within a half lap of getting that first victory and ran out of fuel. They swear there's no fuel concern. And in fact, the engineers have told him, if you get in a situation where you have to, use that button that gives you the extra zip of horsepower. Well, he's driving a very good steady race. He's got no pressure from Jimmy Bass at the moment. Jimmy's trying to protect that second place spot from Jill DeFerrin and protect his teammate's point lead. A man from Brazil with Formula One experience and now a handful of seasons in the PPG Kart World Series. A terrific qualifier looking for his first win. There goes Jimmy Vassar and Jill DeFerrin. The top three running fairly close together. The gap back to Alex Zanardi in fourth is now about eight seconds with two laps remaining. Three men up front with so much to prove, Danny. Gugelman a win. Vassar, his best performance of the year as the reigning champion. DeFerrin staying alive. And Big Mo's not slowing down. He's still turning laps in the 56 second bracket, which is except for Zanardi, the fastest laps out there. I was about to say, only one man on the track is faster. Pretty considerably so, 56-7 on that last lap to the 55-6 of Alex Zanardi. I gotta tell you, the feeling that he's got right now when he sees that white flag, his first win coming, one lap to go is, oh, don't make a mistake, don't have anything go wrong, please nothing break. He's listening to every noise in that car. He'll break early, conservative, be really steady on his shifts, stay away from those walls. It has been so competitive in the PPG Kart World Series this year. Mauricio Gugelman could become our third first-time winner this year. The man from Joinville, Brazil, now living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with his wife and children. I'd like to have a heart monitor on there because either it's not ticking at all or it's going about a thousand beats a minute. He could become the 36th driver to win a PPG Kart World Series event. Bruce McCaw looking on with his team. McCaw has built this team up to become one of the front running outfits in the series. And they prove it again today. Checkered flag for first time winner Mauricio Gugelman. Third victory for the Pac West team this year. All of them on road courses, Portland, Toronto and Vancouver. The eighth win for a Mercedes engine the 11th for Firestone Tires, ninth in a row for the Firestone brand. A Christian Fittipaldi has crashed out in turn 10, gets out of his car with cars coming on at top, well, top speed under braking. Man, that's not the way you want to jump out right there on the last lap, especially with a brace on your leg as he continues to heal from that broken leg in Australia earlier. Let's take a look. Three cars in there, they all bunched up. We saw this earlier with Richie Hearn. A Brazilian triumvirate, Ribeiro, Boisel, and Fittipaldi, Christian and what, getting the worst of it. And what happens is it just gets an accordion effect, and Christian has to stand on it, turns it sideways. Well, a celebration has broken out down in the Pac West pits. Gary Gerald. Well, we're in the middle of it. Everybody coming up to hug, to kiss, to congratulate, to high five. Bruce McCall, what's the significance of winning in your own backyard with Mo for the first time? Just winning with Mo is fantastic. He's been such a big part of this team and I'm so happy for him and it, it's just fantastic. The emotion is there behind those sunglasses and we'll let him enjoy this moment with the, with the tears. Let's check in with the Ganassi pit. Jan? Well Tom Anderson obviously keeping an eye on Jimmy Vassar. Jimmy had a steady race but boy Alex was all over the place up and down but for you got to be very impressed now that Jimmy's kind of back on track. He, he had a, we had a long talk uh, with the team and Jimmy uh, on Monday after Elkar. We've been at a pretty rough season this year, and uh, we, we were going to throw a test in at Nazareth, and we canceled that and wanted to concentrate on this weekend. And uh, 
kind of looked like uh, Jimmy Vassar from 96. So uh, we're pretty happy with it all today. Wish we could have, uh, wish the gearbox would have stayed with him all day, but it wasn't to be. So uh, second place feels pretty good right now. What was missing in the gearbox? Well, we had we had some problems in that that long run there in a second, and uh, uh, the race course is pretty bumpy up here, and uh, it took the edge off the dog ring, and we weren't able to use the uh, uh, the the shift without lift, and uh, so he was having to shift the, the manual way. So uh, that was a little slower than what he was been used to. All right. Well, congratulations, Tom. Thanks, John. Congratulations indeed. A good effort for Jimmy Vassar, but there is the man of the moment, Mauricio Gujelman. The PPG Cup is not clinched here in Vancouver. We'll be back with more in a moment. Alex, for you, that was one of the most dramatic races we've seen for a long time. I know a lot of other drivers probably would want to talk with you after that one. You were very aggressive moving through traffic. Most of them were picture-perfect passes, but a couple times, like with Herta, it got pretty dicey. Tell me about that one. It's not a couple of times, it was just with Erta, and uh, I was in. He tried to make the turn, there was not room for two cars. Now what about Al Jr.? You guys rubbed a little bit too, didn't you? Well, with Al Jr., I mean, I, I, I went in the inside, obviously I brake too deep, and then uh, he got me in the outside, we went side by side, it was very correct, he gave me the room, and, uh, and then I passed him in the following turn. Now, a couple of times you ended up down the escape road. We had some reports you had some brake trouble, was that correct, a long pedal? Yeah, the, I don't know what, what the problem was, but uh, we had some brake problems and a uh, couple of times the, just, just the brake pedal just went down completely. So overall, are you pleased with the performance today? Absolutely. It was obviously difficult to drive the car like that. I had to pound the brake pedal all, all the race long and, uh, you know, it's disappointing because definitely we had the speed to win the race and to close the championship today, but with all that and... With all it happened, I mean, uh, I think it's a miracle that we come back with a fourth place. Now, what about when the car stalled? There was one time you went down the escape road, were able to keep it running, but then another time the car stalled. Why was that, why was that a factor? Well, because uh, my pe uh, the brake pedal went down and my foot got, got stuck behind the, the throttle pedal. So by trying to take my foot out of it, uh, I actually brought the pedal back with me and, and it kept stuck there for about a couple of seconds and the engine stalled and it's a, it's a disappointment but I'm obviously happy with all the overtaking maneuver I did in a circuit where normally it's very difficult to do it all right this guy looked like he was playing a video game Gary Jimmy Vassar has climbed out of his car and it's been a long time since you've been up there leading a race being back on the podium tell me about this day because I know there was some frustration with the with the gearbox and the dog ring I guess in there well, it was a lot of things in the gearbox. I was having to, to do it the old-fashioned way, which is very slow. You have to lift off the throttle, clutch it, and shift. And uh, when that started happening, we just we really didn't have anything from Mauricio. You know, we had a good car earlier. I was, I was stuck behind Bobby. We got around him, and, uh, you know, I was really happy with the car. I thought we were in a good spot to finally win one. And uh, just wasn't there today mechanically. But, uh, you know, all, all credit to my crew, Target Chip Ganassi Racing, for putting me in a position to uh, have a chance to win. It's nice to be uh, near the front again. How about early when you flat spotted a tire? How much did that hold you back? Because you had to go a long time before you were able to get back in the pits to change that set of tires. Yeah, I did, and uh, you know it was a hindrance. I was trying to get around Junior. You know he was he, he was fighting because he was gonna he was gonna go a lap down, and I could understand that. And uh, he's a tough pass on the track, so I, I took a chance at him and I flat spotted the tire, and then I just had to sit there and wait. And uh, he got his yellow to come back around, and uh, I got to go back to the front and. Uh, that's about when the gearbox problem started, and, uh, you know, that's just it's a shame, but that's motor racing. Well, it's nice to build some momentum going into these last two events. Absolutely. We, we need to move up in the points. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. Mauricio Guzman, you have waited so long in your career for this moment. I hope it's living up to the expectations. How do you feel? feels great. It's just very hard to describe. I mean, I'm so happy that uh, the team did a great job today. They gave me the car to be up there at the end. We conserved fuel. The Mercedes engine was just great. The Firestone tires, the same as usual, good grip. And then in the end was just concentration to keep the car on the road, and I knew I had the car today, so I was very happy with the result. And I just have to thank everybody that supported me, especially Bruce McCall that had put this race team together, which is just great. How hard was it to be patient on this day, particularly in the first half of the race when you were stalking Jimmy Vassers for so long? Well, we knew we could run with him. I was saving a lot of fuel because here, despite the fact the windows are big, it's always tight on fuel and I left my steam for the end, and that's what I did. 
does this at all make up for the disappointment of what happened at Belle Isle in Detroit when you came within a half lap of enjoying this moment for the first time in your career? Makes up and puts a plaza on top of it. I just feel great now. Thank you. Enjoy it. Bob? Gilda Farron, you're on the podium once again. You've been there more times than anybody virtually this season. And I guess the most important factor, however, is that you keep the championship alive for at least another week going to Laguna. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it was a fantastic result for us. Anad is doing everything he can to lose the championship. And if he's not careful, we'll take it away from him. As he battled back through the field, Derek Walker, I know, was keeping you aware of his progress. Were you concerned about that red car coming up to challenge you? Uh, not really. I mean, I was uh, driving my own race. The car was uh, very good. And the first, uh, actually, throughout the race, the first half of the race, it was perfect. The second half of the race, started to get a little bit of a brake problem. But it was a fantastic result for us. Well, from coming from what happened to you and having to give up that Friday qualifying, I'd say it's a pretty solid weekend. I think so, too. And there's more to come. <laughs> Thanks. Well, if you're with us on our pre-race show on ESPN2, Al Jr. told us that today was a new day and you forecasted you were going to go to the front. You did with a fifth place finish. But tell us about that rubbing you did with Zanardi. Well, we uh, we actually, uh, I don't think we, we actually hit each other. Uh, we got close, though. It looked like that you guys <laughs> rubbed each other. <laughs> we, well, we could have. I mean, I, uh, I was coming up through there, and I rubbed wheels with just about everybody out there, I think. But uh, I just want to thank the Marvel Team Penske. They did a great job all day long. Really, the guys did the most passing you know with the pit stops and Rods called the race really well and and um, you know we just need a little bit better qualifying position and and uh, I really feel we can race these guys but you know we just need to work hard at it and so on and and uh, you know I learned a lot today so uh, that's good now do you think you learn more today than when you won here four times when you're having to battle through the pack well, I wouldn't say that I learned more. I just learned a lot different stuff. <laughs> so, so you know, we just, uh, you know, I just got to thank my guys. I mean, they uh, they gave me a car that lasted all day, and that allowed me to be out there learning, uh, learning the the racing. All right, it's good to see you with a smile. Yeah, thank you.